I'm still working through the torch videos and today I'm looking at the Skill Hunt EC300. The company sent two of these in for review. I have the cool white and the neutral white so I thought we could compare both of those just to show you what the tints look like. We've got some interesting features on this torch including the RGB LEDs. We also have quite a lot of power levels on this torch, seven in total. Most of the items are in the cardboard compartment and that includes the user manual which I will go through a bit later on in detail, a couple of spare o-rings, a type A to type C charging cable, there's a Skill Hunt branded wrist strap and do note there is a bit of thread there to help put it through the hole and this is the stainless steel double clip. Looking at the body now you'll see they've gone with a sort of grey finish, it's similar to some of the jet beam torches I've looked at. Got a cross pattern with some fine knurling on it on the main body. This switch material feels like an Olight, it's sort of a flexible plastic as opposed to rubber or silicone. Here's the port cover, I prefer not to have the band around the top, although it seems to work okay. It does require quite a bit of effort to push it in place though, so that's perhaps one thing which might be improved a little bit. It does stay in place well enough, I am being a bit picky here. I do like that cross pattern, it does give you a bit of grip even if you're wearing gloves. Just a recessed part on the bottom, there is no magnet with this. A couple of holes there for your wrist strap. You can see that fine knurling pattern that we have on the base or tail cap which makes it very easy to unscrew. The threads on this are quite thick and they're square cut and you can see that spring there. That's quite a chunky spring. And we'll just take the battery out now to have a look at this. They're all pretty much the same, these batteries, just the manufacturers put their own branding on them. They're usually made by Panasonic, there's very little difference in terms of their performance. Medium thickness on the barrel tube and you can see the arrow there with the negative symbol. On the inside there's also another spring at the top. That means we can use the unprotected 21700 batteries, no problems at all. Looking at the top now, you'll notice that the covers have a frosted effect on them, so they're not quite fully transparent. I'll give you another angle here. You can see there is a glass coating, so these torches do have the glass underneath, and I'll just unscrew that bezel. It's a fairly low profile bezel on these torches. And I'll take that off and show you there is that glass covering, and it does have the AR coating on that. The frosted effect is with the optical lenses that they have. Pretty neat and tidy soldering job onto the double clip, the stainless steel clip. That's pretty secure and it does have a bit more resistance than most of the ones that I've looked at. A bit more pressure, a bit more tension on it. We move on to the user manual now to have a look at that. There's some interesting things going on with this. The flowchart that they have provided could be improved a little bit but it's the wording that they've used for the UI which makes it look much more complicated than it is in reality. I'll go through the UI myself and hopefully that will demystify it a bit. Single press is your on and off and there are three power levels in this mode. This is your sort of normal mode as such. Push and hold to cycle them and you do have a memory for the last one that you've picked. To get into the moonlight, or the RGB mode, all you need to do for that is a long press. It's push and hold to cycle through the two lowest moonlight modes, L1 and L2. To cycle between the normal moonlight and the RGB, just a double press, and again, it's a long press to cycle through the colors. You do have a memory with the colors as well. To get to your turbo when it's on or off, it's just a double press. This will not work in the moonlight mode because the double press cycles the white light and RGB, but it does with every other mode. Here's your lockout. All you need to do is press four times to lock and unlock, and it will show you by flashing when it's locked. You do have access to a momentary mode, which is 40 lumens. If you want to switch between on and off for the beacon or location light on the switch, just a double press does that. Get to the strobe, we need to press that three times and a double press will cycle through the strobe modes. It does have a memory for the strobe mode, so that includes the RGB. 
it will go back to that the next time you hit the strobe. In most ways I find the UI to be quite good. It's certainly much better than it appears on paper. You could debate if you need to have two outputs for Moonlight or two for Turbo. On the other hand that does give you a bit more flexibility. Quick Kelvin test on the Cool White came in at 6400 and it was around about 4600 with the Neutral White, the high CRI. You have a four stage power check on the torch so you've got a combination of solid and flashing blue and red. Charging speeds are very good, 2.25 amps, which is faster than most of the torches that I've looked at using the 21700 battery. And it's also a bit smaller than the other torches that I've looked at recently, the G15 version 2. It's a bit shorter than that. Onto the beam shots now, and we're starting off with the Unicorn. Quite a warm output on that torch, but you'll see the difference when we switch over to the Skill Hunt. And this is at the lower turbo output. It's still quite bright though over 1100 lumens and then we take it up to the top output for some reason it's 2600 lumens or 2300 ANSI and we're on to the neutral white now output on that in the second turbo mode is around about 750 lumens and the highest turbo is about 1700 lumens the information I got off of the company is that the output is about 65% of the cool white emitter and you can obviously see the difference with the tint between these two torches the neutral white being more magenta and the cool white being closer to the green the frosted effect on the optical lens that definitely does make a difference it seems to sort of spread things out a bit more make things a bit more diffused so i'll carry on with some more beam shots and my usual summary will be at the end of the video few of my thoughts using the skill hunt I do quite like the body design on this everything feels very nicely made and machined a couple of points for me I would have liked to have had that user manual improved it certainly does overcomplicate the UI in many ways would have been nice to have had a holster or a bag to carry it in I am pleased to see that the colored LEDs are bright enough to be useful they're not just there for show they're not just a gimmick if you've used any of the skill hunts before, be interested to hear what your opinion is. Hope that was useful to you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.